What's going on guys? It's Fitz Miller and the Skyline back here with another video. Today I'm going to tell you guys how to get into drifting from somebody who recently got into drifting. Without further ado guys, let's get right into the video. I'm going to start this off by saying no, you don't need a Skyline. You don't need a 180 or a 240. You don't need a SR swapped anything. You don't need a Turbo Miata. You don't need a M52 swapped E36. All right. You just, you don't. You need a rear wheel drive and preferably manual car. That's it. I hit my first skid, whatever, hit my first little donut in my old BMW. Rear wheel drive and manual in like a old ass abandoned parking lot. Just hit a little, hit a little skirt. Dude, I was beyond happy that day. And ever since then, kind of had it in the back of my head, oh, I really wanted to get in drifting, really wanted to get in drifting. Didn't know how. I had no idea how to get into the sport of drifting. But I'm gonna explain a little bit of my process, how I got into it, and uh, a bunch of good tips and helpful thoughts I've learned along the way. So, rear wheel drive, manual, it's about all you need. There's a couple automatic LS400s, a couple automatic ISs. You can slide an automatic. It's not impossible. And I don't think it's all that hard for parking lot stuff or, you know, smaller tracks. <laughs> You'll just learn. Let's say you got your rear wheel drive, preferably manual car. What next? You've got the donuts down. You got the figure eights down. You don't need those. You can figure that out at the track. You know, if you don't want to risk going out to an empty parking lot or something, but you got your rear wheel drive manual car what are you gonna need next you are gonna need a spare set of tires all right you can either have your stocks you can have another set of wheels what I would recommend doing if this is your very first time going out look on Facebook marketplace find something in your bolt pattern uh, if it's a Nissan or most other cars 5x114.3 so go on Facebook marketplace go on Craigslist find some wheels and tires you can usually get a set for like 200 bucks, 300 bucks. You're gonna pay about that much for tires and getting them mounted on your current set of wheels. So you may as well add another set of four to your collection so that if you pop one, run out of tread, you'll have more tires available for later in the day. As you guys can see, I have my SSRs on the car currently. We have two more 18s. And then we have a set of four of my original stockies with fresh tires that I got before the last drift event. Hey, the likelihood that you're gonna go through a rear set of tires, a front set of tires at all in your first day, pretty low. You might get close to running out of a rear set. I definitely didn't even get close, but make sure you wanna have a couple extra tires for the drive home since you are driving the car there and back. That's another thing that I should talk about. You don't need a truck and trailer. You see all the big guys and they got like loads of wheels and tires. Uh, you don't need that. You can just drive your car there, toss a couple of wheels and tires in your car, maybe in a friend's car, go out to the track. You got your car, you got your wheels and tires, you got your track day picked out. What else are you gonna need? You're gonna want a basic set of tools, wrenches, ratchet set, zip ties, pretty much anything you can think of stuff it all in a backpack, that's what I do. You'll just be ready in case anything goes wrong. You guys are also gonna want a jack and jack sands, pieces of wood if your car's low, for changing out tires, possibly an impact, if not a tire iron will do just fine. Depending on what track you go to, you're gonna want a helmet, that's usually required in most techs. The overview of the car, people checking your car to make sure it's safe to slide. You're gonna want a helmet and maybe a limited amount of gas, I don't know, for other tracks, but for my local one, a helmet and 60 bucks and you're allowed to slide. You got all your stuff together. You're getting ready to go out to the track. Before you do that, you're gonna wanna look over your car completely for a couple basic things. One, check your oil. Do you have oil? Have you done an oil change? Do you need to top it off? All that sort of stuff. Check for any big leaks, anything like that. If you know your car leaks a little bit, whatever, take an extra half a quart and you'll be fine. Check your coolant, all right? Make sure your cooling system is all working properly. Can get hot out there doing hot laps on a hot ass track day. Check your cooling system. And then lastly, you're gonna wanna check your suspension. So you have a good shakedown to every arm, all four corners, your coilovers, if you have them, you don't need coilovers, but your coils, your struts, whatever you wanna call them, give everything there a good shakedown. And lastly, check your lugs. I've seen a couple wheels fly off. Probably want a fire extinguisher just in case. I keep one because I, you, know, <laughs> you never know, dude. I've seen a car catch on fire the last two events. So you never know. But do a good shakedown of your car. Ensure that it is ready. It is able to slide with 
no problems. Knock on wood for that one. So let's say you got all your stuff together up to this point. It's time to go to the track. You go to the track, you find your little pit spot, you get in, you get your helmet, pass tech, you've gone through tech, whatever. You get in line to start drifting. Me, uh, to be honest with you guys, I was shitting my pants. I was extremely, extremely nervous. You know, it's intimidating going out your first day. You got a freaking SR240 in front of you and a LS350 behind you, and you're like, I've never done this before, you know? I would suggest, personally, the first couple laps, go out and just learn the track. And this would be true for any new track. Just drive the track spiritedly, all right? Don't worry about sliding just yet. Go out and just learn the track. Get a feel of your car and make sure it's doing good and ready for sliding when you get to the track. After that point, man, you get back in line. You're gonna have to give it a go. It's up to you whether you wanna move the car back and forth to get it to slide out. If you want a clutch kick to start your, your first slide, if you just wanna turn and give it gas, depending on what car you drive, how much torque, power, all that stuff, you'll figure that out. You just need to experiment. You need to try and don't be scared of spinning out. If you do spin out, you know, twice, once or twice, just drive off the track, it's fine. You'll get your go on the next run. You don't wanna slow down the better guys, you know, experienced guys who are just gonna shred the entire track. You don't wanna just be sitting there, spinning out three or four times, and then everybody's gonna be kinda of pissing you. Also, if there's a smaller track available, like a little, a little skid pad or a donut track, keep your time limited on that. Just get back in line. You can go again, but you don't wanna hog it up from everybody else. You've gotten all your stuff together. You've gone to the track. You've gotten out and done your first couple laps. From there on, seat time, seat time, seat time. I've had a lot of people tell me, oh my God, Fitz, you've improved so much. Doesn't feel like it, but I guess people looking from the outside, they can see the progress that I've made, which is really exciting to me. And don't get me wrong, I've definitely progressed. I'm not to a point where I'm comfortable yet, a point to where I'd like to be at yet but we're getting there so just seat time seat time seat time the community itself is very nice go out and ask questions go go make friends walk up to you people say hi ask for ride-alongs don't be scared to do all that stuff if they say no go to the next one whatever you can learn a lot from a ride-alongs you going out and riding with somebody more experienced or two asking somebody who is more experienced to ride with you give you some pointers this is something i really want to do next time just to get the lines down and, and what gear to be in and all of that also, I haven't even touched my e-brake. Like I said, guys, from that point, just seat time. Go have fun. Don't treat it like a test. Don't have any expectation. Go out and do it solely for fun, and you'll get better the more laps you hit around your local track. After that's all done, I mean, you put your regular wheels and tires back on, and you drive home, assuming everything went well for that day. But, guys, that is going to be about it for, for how to get into drifting. A lot of this stuff, unfortunately, you have to go out by yourself and try. I can't tell you where to get wheels and tires. I can't tell you what track to go to or really how to drift. A lot of it is getting in, dumping the clutch, and, and learning how to slide, feeling out your car. Every car feels different. Every clutch feels different. If you do have a simulator at home with a set of Corsa and either VR or not VR, you can learn a lot, a lot from a simulator. I had a like pretty you know cheap basic simulator for Forza Horizon and got the basics of, of drifting counter steering with a wheel on my hands compared to a controller you're not gonna get a whole lot out of that but you are definitely gonna get a good start and you're gonna know what to do what to look for when you go out for your first track day so anyways guys this has been Fitz Miller in the skyline back here with another video if you guys have any questions at all any questions please go down in the comments below let me know and i'll be sure to get back to you it's been fitzman the skyline back here with another video and we'll see you guys in the next one